Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. So this week I met up with the guys over at Team Turn 3. Typically they play a lot of competitive cutthroat decks in EDH, but this game was a bit more casual. Since I was only able to bring two decks with me, this week I'm playing my Doretti Scrap Savant deck. Ivan is playing his roommate's Karametra God of the Harvests deck. Niven is playing Alesha, who smiles at death, and Jesse is playing Thrasios Triton Hero, paired up with Timna the Weaver. For openers, I keep a hand with Phyrexia's Core, Blood Moon, Two Mountains, Kark Clan Ironworks, Thran Dynamo, and Ink Moth Nexus. Ivan's hand had Zendikar Royal, Acidic Slime, Temple Garden, Mana Vault, Avon Mind Sensor, Enlightened Tutor, and a Forest. Niven's hat had Talisman of Indulgence, Cavern of Souls, Plains, Animate Dead, Plateau, Mana Vault, and Ariac Salvagers. Lastly, Jesse's hand has Noble Hierarch, Walking Ballista, Shardless Agent, Twilight Mire, Sylvan Library, Tundra, and Birds of Paradise. Ivan wins the die roll and starts us off. For Ivan's first turn, he plays Temple Garden, taking 2 damage to have the land come into play untapped, and casts Finned Horned Elves before passing to me. I play a mountain for my turn and I pass to Jesse. Jesse plays Twilight Mire for his turn and passes to Niven. Niven plays Caverns of Souls, naming Human, and taps it to cast Mana Vault before passing to Ivan. Ivan plays a Force and then pays 3 to cast Tireless Tracker before passing to me. I play another Mountain and pass to Jesse. For Jesse's turn, he plays a Tundra and then casts Lotus Petal. He cracks the Lotus Petal for a black and taps Twilight Mire to produce 2 green. He casts Birds of Paradise and taps Tundra to also cast Sylvan Library. With nothing else, he passes to Niven. By comparison, Niven's turn is quite quick as he plays a Plains and casts Tark Confidant before passing to Ivan. Ivan unfortunately misses his land drop and he taps his Forest to cast Mana Vault and then taps Mana Vault, Temple Garden, and Findhorn Elves to cast Karametra. Moving to combat, Tireless Tracker attacks Jesse for 3. With nothing else, he passes to me. For my turn, I play Phyrexia's Core and see an opportunity to punish some greedy mana bases, and I cast Blood Moon before passing to Jesse. During Jesse's draw step, he uses Sylvan Library to look at the top 3 cards. He decides to keep all of them and takes 8 life. Unfortunately, none of those cards are lands, and Jesse pays 3 mana to cast Reclamation Sage, who, upon entering the battlefield, destroys my Blood Moon. With nothing else, he passes to Niven. On Niven's upkeep, Dark Confidant reveals Necromancy, and he takes 3 damage. He then plays a Plains and moves to combat, swinging Dark Confidant at me for 2. During his second main phase, he taps out to cast Alesha, who smiles at death. On Ivan's turn at the beginning of his draw step, Mana Vault is still tapped, so he takes 1. Ivan also misses his land drop for turn, and he moves to combat, swinging Tireless Tracker at me for 3. With nothing else, he passes the turn. For my turn, I play Ink Moth Nexus, and I cast Thoran Dynamo before passing to Jesse. During Jesse's draw step, he once again uses Sylvan Library, and this time he only takes 4, keeping 1 extra card. Jesse then plays Wooded Foothills, not to be confused with Footed Wood Hills, he uses birds to tap Twilight Mire, generating two green, and uses one of the green to cast Noble Hierarch. Jesse then cracks Wooded Foothills. Ivan responds by casting Avon Mind Sensor, to make Jesse only look at the top four. Ivan also gets a trigger from Karametra, and he goes and finds a plains and puts him with the field tapped. This in turn triggers Tireless Tracker, and Ivan gets a clue. Looking at the top four cards of his library, Jesse unfortunately fails to find. Using his one green floating and tapping his tundra for a blue, Jesse casts Gilded Drake, who steals Ivan's Avon Mind Sensor. On Niven's upkeep, Dark Confidant reveals Nile's Spell Bomb, and he takes one. He then draws for turn and moves to his first main phase. Niven drops Phyrexian Tower for his land for turn and casts Talisman of Indulgence. He then moves to combat swinging Alesha at Ivan. Ivan chooses to chump with Gilded Drake, who gets killed by Alesha as she has first strike and goes to Jesse's graveyard. At the beginning of Ivan's draw step, he loses another life because Mana Vault is still tapped. Ivan unfortunately misses his land drop again for turn and he moves straight to combat swinging Tireless Tracker at Jesse. Jesse declares no blocks and takes 3 damage. With nothing else, he passes to me. For my turn, I tap Thran Dynamo to cast Sculpting Steel, and it comes into play as a copy of Thran Dynamo. I then tap Thran Dynamo on a mountain to cast Doretti. I uptick Doretti, pitching two cards to draw two cards. I hit a land thankfully and I play Valakut the Molten Pinnacle before passing to Jesse. Jesse drops Command Dower for his turn, and then taps four to cast Walking Ballista with two counters on it. Moving to combat, Jesse swings Avon Mind Sensor at Doretti. Unfortunately, we miss the Exalted trigger, so it doesn't get the plus one plus one, and as a result, Doretti only takes two. On Niven's upkeep, Dark Confidant reveals Strip Mine and he takes zero. He then draws for turn and begins his main phase. Niven then plays Strip Mine for his land drop for turn, and with nothing else, passes to Ivan. At the end of Niven's turn, Ivan takes the opportunity to flash in Stone Cloaker. This triggers Karametra, but unfortunately Ivan's only allowed to look at the top four cards of his library. He does find Dryad Arbor and gets to put it into play. This triggers Tireless Tracker, who puts a clue onto the battlefield. 
Stonecloaker then resolves and enters the battlefield, exiling my Krark Clan Ironworks. Ivan then returns Stonecloaker to his hand. With all his shenanigans at Niven's end of turn finished, Ivan then begins his own turn. During his first main phase, Ivan plays Horizon Canopy and gets another clue token thanks to Tireless Tracker. Ivan then moves to combat, swinging Tireless Tracker to ready, and I choose to animate Ink Moth Nexus and block it. During Ivan's second main phase, he casts Acidic Slime and Karametra triggers. Unfortunately, he still can only look at the top four and he fails to find. Acidic Slime then enters the battlefield and targets Jesse's Walking Ballista. With the Slime's trigger targeting Walking Ballista, Jesse uses the opportunity to remove the two plus one plus one counters and ping the Slime for two damage. For my turn, I play a Mountain, then I tap six to cast Worm Coil Engine. I then uptick to ready to pitch a card and I tap four lands to cast Trading Post. With nothing else, I pass to Jesse. On Jesse's draw step, he uses the Sylvan Library, but doesn't keep any extra cards. He then plays Mana Confluence. Jesse then taps Noble Hierarch so he can tap Twilight Mire to generate two black mana. He casts Demonic Tutor to go find a card in his library. This spells the beginning of the end, as the card he found was Allurin, and he casts it. With nothing else, he passes to Niven. During his upkeep, Niven's Dark Confidant reveals Bitter Ordeal, and he takes three damage and puts it into his hand. Moving to his draw step, he draws a card and moves to his main phase. Niven then casts Reanimate, targeting Ivan's Acidic Slime. Jesse responds by casting Pact of Negation to counter the Reanimate. Niven then moves to his backup plan and casts Animate Dead. Jesse responds to Animate Dead by casting Shardless Agent for free thanks to Allurin. Ivan wants to get on this response action and brings in Stonecloaker also thanks to Allurin. Karametra's ability triggers and he finds a planes in the top four. And, as he enters the battlefield, he exiles Jesse's Pact of Negation. Ivan holds priority and announces that he's going to cast Stonecloaker and bounce him back to his hand as many times as it takes to find all the forest and planes cards in his library. Even with Jesse controlling his Avon Mind Sensor, he's still able to look at the top four cards an infinite number of times until he finds all of his lands. He's able to find 17 lands as ways and gain 17 clue tokens and is able to exile all of our graveyards. With all of Ivan's silliness resolving, Jesse's finally able to Cascade and he hits Green Sun Zenith, which he chooses not to cast. With the Cascade and Shardless Agent resolving, Niven's Animate Dead finally hits the field and Acidic Slime comes back into play. Niven puts Acidic Slime's triggered ability on Jesse's Allurin, although at this point I'm pretty sure the damage is already done. Going for maximum value, Ivan brings in Fierce Empath thanks to Allurin while it still has the trigger on the stack, and with incredible luck only looking at the top four cards, he's able to find Kamal, Fist of Krosa. Niven then casts Nile Spellbomb and passes to Ivan. Once again on Ivan's draw step, he takes one as Mana Vault is still tapped. Ivan's first main phase sees Zendikar Resurgence come into play, because what's better than having 18 billion lands? Well, making them tap for two. He then taps four lands to generate eight mana and casts Archetype of Endurance, which gives all of his creatures hexproof and removes it from ours. He also gets to draw thanks to Zendikar Resurgence. Kamal Frist of Krosa decides to join the party, and Ivan gets to draw another card. Deciding that drawing once off of each creature isn't enough, Ivan casts Rishkar's Expertise, drawing six cards. He's also able to put into play Marsh Flats, which unfortunately will only just shuffle his library as he's taken all the planes out. Ivan then casts Mana Crypt and announces that his storm count is six. But just like life, all good things must come to an end, and Ivan having drawn so many cards this turn, has of course found Tooth and Nail. He entwines the powerful sorcery and holds priority and casts Swords of Plowshares on his own Ivan Mind Sensor that Jesse controls. This allows him to find and put onto the battlefield Avenger of Zendikar and Crater Hoof Behemoth. He stacks the trigger so that Avenger of Zendikar goes first, and all of his creatures get plus enormous plus enormous and trample. Now, unfortunately he's not able to attack with all of his plant tokens, but he does have enough creatures that get pumped high enough that he can kill all three of us in one shot. Game review time! It was a lot of fun meeting the guys over at Team Turn 3, and it was really nice of them to build some decks that are a bit out of their wheelhouse as they are not super competitive. They tend to play those really cutthroat and brutal decks, and it's a lot of fun to watch, but I didn't really bring any of those decks with me, so it was great that we were able to find sort of a middle ground. Doretti unfortunately underperformed this game. Without early turn ramp, Doretti coming in on turn 4 leaves himself open to being smacked by a lot of mana dorks. This puts you in a bit of an awkward position as you often want to down tick him to switch out some powerful artifacts, but I found myself wanting to up tick him to protect him so I wouldn't have to recast him for 6 when he died. Looking back at it now, I should have mulliganed my opening hand and gone for something a bit more aggressive. Jesse's 4 color deck was heavily inspired around Allurin and built to abuse the enchantment. Jesse mentioned after the game that had he waited until his turn to cast Allurin, he probably could have won, but he just wanted to have a fun game of EDH, so casting Allurin was his top priority. The only thing I would have done differently had I been in his shoes was keep Pact of Negation for Ivan's Stonecloaker, which we knew that he had in hand. It would have been fine to let Niven take a bit of damage from Reanimate, and it would have forced Ivan to act earlier. While I was hanging out with the guys, I found out that Ivan likes to play Storm decks, and what was really cool was that he almost got to do that with the Karametra deck. It's a real shame that green and white don't really have very many good storm cards. 
Niven's Alesha Who Smiles at Death deck was pretty cool, and I got to see it a bit more in the second game we played, which unfortunately we weren't able to finish because the camera died. It's built around the Bomberman combo, and it allows Alesha to bring back critical pieces. Please be sure to tune in every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video, with a second video popping up sometime during the week. You can also follow me on Twitter at mtgmudsta, or check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below or in the about section. As always, thank you guys for watching and please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.